Saving baby orphaned animals or injured animals in need of medical treatment is always super satisfying to watch turn out well. And of course, we always root for their recovery and success. But what about when the animal in need of saving is an adult rattlesnake? And that rattlesnake needs medical treatment. That's when things get complicated. We're heading out to South Mississippi, where one of the wildlife technicians in the area recently found an eastern diamondback rattlesnake that didn't look to be doing so well. So guys, right now I am en route to pick up a diamondback rattlesnake. Uh, one of the other biologists out here, CJ, actually ended up finding a very thin and emaciated rattlesnake that really could use some help. It looks like it's either got some parasites or tumors on it. We'll be able to give it a diagnosis, but I'm heading down there now, gonna pick up this snake, and we're gonna see what we can do for it. The Southern Research Station works on research and conservation of wildlife in this area, but they aren't a wildlife hospital. That's why I'll be lending a quick hand in finding out exactly what's wrong with this snake and hopefully getting him back out into the national forest where he belongs. I'm flying solo for now, so I gotta set up carefully and secure our snake for transport. This will also be my first look at what condition he's in. The lumps, I would have to assume, are tumors but I won't know for sure until I get a hand on the snake. They could also be really bad sores or just subcutaneous parasites. Now my initial thoughts about looking at this snake is that this is an old, old snake. Having looked at some very old rattlesnakes in the past, like that Mojave over in Arizona, or even Roy's rattlesnake over in West Texas, this snake is very similar. Very slow rattle, very thin jowls, and covered in lots of bumps. Those could be parasites. Uh, I really have to check still, but I would have to guess this is an old snake. Either way, whether this is parasites and this is a young snake, or this is just an old snake whose body is really, really slowing down, Either way, we're gonna be able to help this guy out. We're gonna get him some stuff, some antibiotics, some shots that really should help him get going sooner. After prepping our rattlesnake for a secure and comfortable transport, we got him back to my place for a more thorough inspection. It's hard to diagnose a rattlesnake at first glance. All I can really do is start with the most basic first treatments. And first up is a good meal. We need to make sure this snake can still catch his own food. So I offered him a small live mouse, nothing too big. And about an hour left alone, voila, no mouse. That's a pretty good sign. However, this snake is clearly not just suffering from a lack of food. There's other issues at play. I decided the next reasonable step was gonna be to give this snake an antibacterial shot. Now that may sound kinda crazy, but keep in mind, I've given snakes shots before. The only difference is this is a highly venomous rattlesnake. All right guys, so this is where we're gonna be giving this animal a shot. I'm actually gonna be needing a little bit of help on this. This is easily a two person job. Now this is really all I'm gonna need for this. We've got disinfectant wipes for when I actually administer the shot. And then we have this right here, which this is calculated based on the weight of the animal. I actually have a little bit of extra in here because this snake is doing so bad. It's actually, with this medication in particular, it's better to have a little bit more than a little bit less. And this little bit extra is not going to hurt the snake in any way no matter what. It just could really help if he's doing really bad. And uh, that's this right here. Got Tetracycline G, which is actually very helpful. I've actually used it on the snakes you've seen behind me. See, Snake, I've given her this shot. I helped her bounce back very quickly when she was having some problems. So this is something that I have actually done before, just not with a rattlesnake, especially one like this. Uh, this is an older snake. It's not looking the best, but I'm hoping this will actually give him a really good boost. This is something that will oftentimes give them a boost of energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to safely take the snake out. My dad's actually going to head it outside to where we've got more space to work with it. We're going to bring it in fully under control. I'm going to administer it the shot. It's all going to be a very quick process. So we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into that. So it looks like I'll be needing a little bit of help. And who better to help me out with a rattlesnake than my dad? He's been working with snakes for far longer than I have and has the necessary experience to help me with this two-man job. Instead of tubing the snake, a process which safely immobilizes the snake's upper body, 
My dad's gonna head the snake so we can get a full body inspection, including venom and one of the lumps near the neck. So my dad's got the snake perfectly pinned. It's not comfortable for the snake, but it's safe for us right now. And I'm gonna feel these first. Those are timbers. <laughs> like it's not even, not even a question whether these are tumors or not. So I'm thinking probably about right here it would be pretty good, huh? Lower end, like past any here. major organs. Yeah. And that meat right here. Yeah, there. right there. So this is a little antibiotic tetracycline shot. This is something that can actually very much so help the snake. Although at this stage in the snake's life. It might only give him a quick boost, but since he's so old, that little boost might be enough for him to get a good meal out of the wild. So, go right up to the skin, right there, and I'm going to wipe that off when we're done. And you can see this snake is incredibly emaciated. See, like, that's the full rattle that the snake can pull off right now. It's an old snake for sure, so... If there was anything blocking, it'd probably be this one. He's got one, two, three, four, because he's got one on his neck, too. All right, here we go. No mistakes allowed. I got to administer the shot right alongside the spine, under the skin, so the snake doesn't die. And my dad has to secure the snake so we don't die. You don't like that. Disinfect that speedily rub it in, which he does not like at all, and that's that. He has been given a shot. Turn body down. So does the tear release last? Could do. Hopefully that helps a little bit. The biggest thing is going to be getting meals in him before release. Thank you very much. Father of mine. Thank you, sir. Took a little bit long. You know, what he just showed you is something that only people that have genuinely worked with snakes should ever do. Typically, you'd want to tube a snake for a medical thing, especially with a rattlesnake, but he's pretty confident in doing that. So that's why we were able to do that, show you the fangs of the snake. And what you'll notice here, actually, if you look at this yellow liquid, that is actually venom from the snake from, you know, when I actually gave it the shot. It was very, very unhappy. I mean, obviously, this kind of sucks. Like, that's... He might recover very well from that. It's at least going to give his body a nice little boost. He's going to feel a little bit better for probably the next day or so. Like he's going to get an energy boost for sure. So hopefully he can make a comeback. Obviously, he's got a lot of issues going on in his body because he is an older snake. But we do want to release this snake. We do want to get him back out into the wild. So I hope to give you guys a positive update on this animal. Our rattlesnake was brought back to the research center. And after a few days, it was released back out into the wild. Unfortunately, the snake wasn't looking too good, but we've still given it a whole heck of a lot better chance of surviving than it would have normally. Most people would see a snake like this and the only shot they'd think to give it would be bird shot. Most people love animals and want to see them preserved for future generations, but when that animal is dangerous, it's really hard to warrant any sympathy from the public. Don't get me wrong, I am not advocating for people to live around hazardous wildlife. What I am advocating for is that we set aside natural habitats, a place for them to live, and that we can appreciate and respect them. We should take care of these animals. Eastern diamondbacks have all but vanished in my home state and are slowly being pushed out of this one. Even though this rattlesnake probably hates me for the last couple days, I still wanted to give him a slightly better chance for no other reason than him being an incredible animal that I'd like to see again someday. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and we will see you guys next time.